What is going on everyone? My name is Boyd and I am back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action spawning in the top of the map in the blue color showing off the multi-god talent that he is. His name is Joe and he is playing Odin. His opponent today sticking with the same civilization but a different god. His name is Kavoth. He is playing Uranus. He's currently one to one in this best of three series for the group stage. This is one of the more fireworks matches here for the uh, for the group stages. Uh, there's been a lot of actually super interesting games thus far in the group stage, and I'm excited to watch how all these players go, especially the lower level players trying to take games off of the strong, uh, the the top level players because. Uh, the tournament has been open sign up and we've seen 1600 players playing at 1800 levels. We've seen even like 1750 players playing at 1800 plus levels. So everyone in the right environment can get up to that level and, um, and compete, which is really, really exciting to see. There, there is always going to be a big difference in, in skill level for these types of tournaments, but you know, let everyone have a go. That's how everyone gets stronger, and that's what I'm a fan of. Uh, but new game, new me, new life. Third game of this series, one to one, uh, and a fairly standard spawn here uh, for game number three. We've got one Auroch, however, only one Auroch here for for Joe and Kavoth and the start of the game. And they're going to have to move to a secondary location. Lots of food spawns here uh, for this uh, for this map here, all over the map. Uh, a ton, actually. So it's a very, very high hunt spawn for both players. We see the cows getting, uh, getting great hunted there by Joe. An interesting decision because there was actually enough deer here, I think, to get a full herd of deer uh, for his... For his great hunt this shows a lot of understanding about this matchup if you ask me in that joe prefers the extra four cows getting fat uh over the extra uh, the, the full 750 food from those deer so he does want a little bit of the deer but he prefers those cows and what this actually says is that joe realizes that a lot of the time in this matchup, the Odin gets pushed off hunt at some point, has to move back onto the cows, and he doesn't really want to be defending said hunt against the raids, potential raids of a Aranos player. So this is this is smart, in my opinion. He's going to be able to eat these a little bit later in the game and live the dream where that's concerned. Uh, Joe going to be looking to try and get to the next stage as fast as he possibly can. Kavoth already over here on his deer. Uh, and... I imagine Kavoth is going to be able to hit up 4.30 here. No problems. As he's jumping onto his chicken. Might want to eat a cow or something just to make sure of it. But he should have the 400 food after this temple is up without too many issues. As we are now starting to see Joe throwing up some walls. Love this wall here. This is a fairly interesting map. I like this map because it, it reminds me a lot of what... Uh, like Age of Empires 4 maps could have been. So the amount, so there is a map in Age of Empires 4. I remember playing this map, which which reminds me of this map. And the map effectively was like some sort of a one hole map where in the very center of the map, there was a giant, uh, well, not a giant. There was just a, a relatively small gap in the middle of the map. But this, this hole here from... Uh, uh, fr from from this map spawn is is really really nice because it makes it really hard to seriously wall off all of this location you have to put a lot of resources into it and then there's also the fact that of having to fend it all and the fact that walls aren't obnoxiously strong uh, so a really really interesting spawn here from uh, uh, from Mr. Rebels Rising uh, and we'll see what he's going to do with it as we do see a mana in the corner of the map jumping onto these elk here. Freya coming through for Joe, Prometheus coming through for Kavoth. No surprises here, and we'll see what Kavoth is going to be able to come up with here. Not on his Gaia, but on Orano. So, in a way, a bit of a buff, and in a way, a bit of a nerf, if you know what I mean. So see counter barracks, military barracks getting dropped here. The Promethean coming through as well. As these villagers are actually getting moved off of food for a little bit here as the longhouse is getting dropped. Very, very surprised 
to see that. I'm not sure what that was about. I think Joe was a little bit scared of something happening here, but it didn't it didn't end up going that way. As Joe going to be wandering over here with his hammers to take out those oracles. Obviously, no uh, valor being used there as Kabok going to be retreating his oracles away, not wanting to lose them just yet. As we do see the Valkyrie now in for Joe, searching for something to get, uh, something to kill here. And I like this Promethean placement from Kavoth, just hanging out, making sure if a Valkyrie does come, he does have some sort of a response to said Valkyrie. Uh, but the Valkyrie does actually win the fight against the Promethean, so you do have to be a little bit careful here. Um, as the Valkyrie Wanderers through, and they start getting some shots in here. As those citizen pull back, what do we got here? Big, big advantage for the Valkyrie in the end of the day, but going to get some good damage done. The hero and Milo are going to come in. Love that from Kavoth. Kavoth, very, very into value, if you ask me, going for the hero Mamillo. Like I say every single time, hero Mamillo instead of hero Terma is the way to go. However, we've got Lone Wanderer coming through for Joe. Ulfsark getting trained. Relic Monkeys have actually got to come through as well. And we do have the Arrows of the Alpha. Extra building pierce damage um, for, for Kavoth if he finds it and wants to grab it for later here. Uh, as Joe's got a really, really easy way forward. He's got these Elk over here. He's got these Aurochs over here. A very, very good spot. Uh, as Kavoth going to try and push through here at some point. As we will see the Wooden Wall... Getting broken down here as more units wandering forward for Kavoth. The Relic Monkey's in the back here. Going to get sniped down very, very fast. Within the dream. Dead, dead, dead. Dead, dead, dead. And he gets a little bit of damage done, but nothing too severe. As the Ulfsarks do find the Temple. This is an interesting attack here from Joe. If Joe takes this down, he slows down the Promethean production quite a bit. Uh, and Kavoth does notice this and says, all right, I'm just going to repair this until my Promethean comes out. Promethean will be out and you're going to get a couple of hits here, but these 5.28 speed Ulf sucks are too speedy and we'll get back here as we will be seeing the units coming through. We see the Shockwave coming in as Kavoth needs to use that one to get out of here as he tries to pick off one of those Ulf sucks. one HP remaining. You hate to see it as the, uh, the Ulf sucks will heal back up. The wall that was once to once get thrown up, going to get re rebuilt here as Joe has fairly nicely defended his entire position here. As Kavoth needs to get a little bit more in the realm of Mermillo here to push in and uh, and get through and onto that those enemy units here because those Terma really don't cut it uh, where where that's concerned. It's husbandry coming through for Joe. Kavoth still retreating back. Deletes his Promethean there, it seems, to make sure his units are moving fairly quickly. And now the old Sark have got their eyes set on this hunt in the corner here. There are some Aurochs here that Joe's going to want to deny. But so too are there Aurochs and Elk over here that Kavoth is going to want to deny here. So we'll see if he's going to be able to get in and get that done. As Joe is really, really abusing this map spawn incredibly well thus far. Consistently putting up walls here and doing that damage as we do see three citizen kills. Three citizen kills. He gets two. He's going for the third one as well. And he does manage to get three citizen kills. That's never happened. That raid is gigantic there for Joe. Putting Kavoth down to 10 citizens. As we see the Mermillo coming through. Attempting to hit these villages over here. There's no uh, shockwave here. But... Uh, Joe uses Forest Fire here as well to help these gatherers get out of here. An incredibly nice play from Joe to defend those, those uh, villages. Kavoth not able to return the damage which Joe has dealt to Kavoth there. And this is a huge turning point for Joe. Uh, and we'll see if he's going to be able to survive in this game as it's going to continue. See the villages back onto the elk over here. Not only does... Uh, Kavoth lose the citizen over here, but he also loses the, the citizen potentially that could have been eating these Aurochs. So if Kavoth wants to get into that corner to eat the Aurochs, he's going to have a very difficult time in front of him as the army pushing through here, going to try and deal with this. We do have a handful of throwing axe in here, which are very, very strong against those Mermillo. As the term are coming in on oh, a kind of unfortunate 
uh, Valor coming in to hit the, the hero, the, the Terma there. As the Terma coming in to try and take down those throwing Axemen. But it does seem like Joe's going to have enough to defend over here. As we see the Old Sarks retreating back home. And Kavoth will indeed have to get out of here. While this wall is attempting to get rebuilt yet again by Joe. Jo trying to make it just a little bit more spicy. Making that long wall not so important. Wanting it to be something just a little bit different. Kara Ballast are now getting built for Kavoth. So we see it getting uh, getting dealt with. And now Kavoth in the back here. Trying to push in as best as he possibly can. But Joe... Joe at this point can fairly happily just sit back. And he's got if he's got line of sight of the units moving in, he can have units up to this top location here. Allow the units to try and push in, say onto these Aurochs or something while he's got his army here. Slight dip back, rush in from the top, and then get surrounds for days here. So Kavoth doesn't really have an avenue to move in and uh, and deal damage to Joe, who is now making his armory. However, at this point, Joe hasn't set up that that multi-army formation. So Kavoth comes in and gets some sort of uh some sort of situation on this. And we do see this now Joe spots it and Joe is indeed moving his old suck into the top location, allowing the army to stretch be stretched thin and better yet Joe going to push through, throw up the wall here to deny the exit of these units. Unfortunately, he's not quite able to get it up. And Kavoth is going to be very aware now that maybe moving through here is not going to be the way. We will be seeing these Ulfsark going to be searching for something to attack. Oh, can he come back? Can he get the wall up? That's the big question. We see the units coming through. The wall comes up and the Ulfsark... Are they going to try and fight this one? As we are going to be seeing those Karabals to very much out of position. The Ulfsark do manage to get the wall up, but it will immediately be taken down as Kavot's army is very much out of position. But he gets a very, very nice choke point here for those Karabals that as medium infantry comes through for Joe. Joe has to pull back. We see the uh, Karabals getting targeted down here as well. As those Karabalas are getting taken out. The Ulfsark getting uh, splashed away there. Nice play from Kavolf to hit that one there. To make his Karabalas to continue staying alive. 104 population for Joe. 104 population for Kavolf. A very, very even fight here. It would seem... But the army here able to deal with those Promethean and the Karabalas are mostly getting cleaned up. And it does seem to me like Joe is slightly winning this fight, which will indeed end with Joe coming out super far in front. The Valkyrie trying to stay away from those here. And Mamilo doing a great job at that indeed. Just manages to keep that one alive. 33 HP remaining. And Kavoth has to retreat back, having now not only lost those three citizens, but lost the big early fight, which would normally be uh, the Aranos is to win there uh, and, and even having that choke point there to keep this Caramel to safe I'm surprised Kavoth couldn't make that one work as maybe those uh, maybe those hero units there from uh, fr oh, not hero units those medium units there medium infantry from Joe coming in a little bit too much it's now Kavoth 99 population. Aurora Borealis coming through for Joe as well. As Kavoth going to continue to try and push through this. And now we'll see. Again, Joe's just trying to circle around this army. He's, he sees this choke point and he's like, I'm just going to keep using it. This is a great way for uh, anyone. This is such an incredible learning tool here that Joe is putting on display. Just saying, look, you cannot overextend here because my Ulf Sarks can swing around the back. You cannot manage to make that work. As we see the Ulf Sarks coming through. Kavoth's going to try and swing around and deny this, but now the Valkyrie come on to the Karabalister. The Ulfsar can pull back, and those Karabalister will get taken down very, very quickly, and then Joe can engage this army yet again in a very, very fav favorable way. Joe just about out of Aurochs. He does have the, that other Auroch there that he's going to be able to get, and now Kavoth uh, slowly retreating away here. He's got the slow Karabalas, but he's also got the slow Promethean here. So he's still not going to speed up any further here to get away from this location. As we do see dwarf, uh, villages in the middle of the map now for Joe. Getting a little bit spicy here to grab this one. 
Joe, he, he will be wanting those ball, but with the units not in position to defend, the villagers do have to retreat. Joe will be able to click up to the heroic age now. He does have himself the armory, and I will I would be surprised to see other anything other than Scotty here. Scotty's so strong in this game. Uh, as the ox cut getting healed back up by the uh, by the Valkyrie. That's a that's a pretty pretty cute sight there. Um, as Kavoth is 115 supply. Uh, and so too is Joe. Joe trying to make these fights work. The Ulfsuck's not in position right now. Going to be going after the Citizen. One Citizen here actually can't garrison. So he will be losing at least one there, it would seem. As Kavoth trying to make this fight work. But those uh, Shield Maiden Valkyries go to town on those two Karabalas. The, the, the throwing axe are going to retreat back here and be completely fine to deal with those medium infantry there. As over here, we see that one citizen was indeed sniped. And Kavoth here losing his Mermillo as well as the mana going to get taken down. But more importantly, while this is all going on, five citizen or six citizen here is like 18 citizen not gathering and that is the game as Kivoth does tap out in the 15th minute of this game. A, a nice try here from Kivoth to make this work. But this seems to have been just too good of a map for Joe. The high hunt nature plus this ridiculously well executed defensive position from Joe. Just too much for what Kivoth wanted to do here in this game. Obviously those three citizens were the Big, big turning point here. Maybe Kavoth would have been, well, Kavoth would have been able to afford medium infantry and potentially even have himself copper mail here and be in a much, much different position for that fight and maybe even have won that fight and able to push forward and kill off and stop the hunt um, from, from Joe. And the problem is he just wasn't able to do it because he lost those citizens in the early game. And then also the uh, craziness of this of this wall shenanigans really put the nail in the coffin here gg well played by joe gets the dub two to one here uh really nice game uh being played here if you guys enjoyed it please consider hitting the follow on the twitch if you're on the youtubes hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next game